Hey Team YouTube, just some fun with mowers today. Um, so, the question I have is, if I need to repower a motor on a uh, lawnmower, how can I do it? Well, for starters, I have a couple of push mowers that are, I believe, what is called the Briggs & Stratton Quantum Series, and these are from the early 2000s, and they feature the uh, cover for your flat air filter and a primer bulb and they are a flathead style of motor. In other words, the valves are next to the piston and you have a spark plug here in the front and they are also featured, you know, you can tell them because they have this kind of rectangular shape muffler on the outside uh, right here and then your uh, uh, linkage here your brake linkage uh, is on the side of the motor just above the muffler. That's a pretty easy way to tell. And I just used that mower uh, because I have this one here, uh, which is another one that I had on a Toro personal pace motor. And uh, anyhow, you can see it has the same features. You know, the, the rubber priming, uh, gas priming bulb, the flathead, the spark plug right on the top here, and again, that rectangular motor or uh, muffler. And the reason I'm doing this is because this particular little motor here is smoking like crazy. I literally pulled this mower off the curb, I don't know, three or four uh, springs ago. Uh, obviously, the person did not like having their mower uh, smoke really bad. And plus, it also had a, uh, some other things on it that aren't, weren't quite uh, right. So they just elected to put it on the curb. But I can't stand the smoking anymore because it's... Uh, it's, it's pretty bad, and it just needs a ring or whatever, piston rings. But I personally don't want to spend 50 bucks and then, you know, all the parts and stuff just to fix, fix it. I would rather do something more economical. Fortunately, in my local whatever ads or whatever, I found a Briggs & Stratton overhead valve engine. So this is the Toro motor, or that uh, motor came out of. What does it take to swap this over? Let me show you about the donor. Hey Team YouTube, this is the donor mower. It's a, like about an 09, 010 Troy built. I've stripped it down, but this is also a self-propelled uh, model and it has the large rear wheels and I just have a lot of this stuff piled up here um, in a box. I might try to sell some of the good parts online, but it was only $30. And so, so that's what I figured the cost of my motor is a thirty-dollar motor, and uh, but the self-propel linkage was broken. Otherwise, it's a pretty nice mower still. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but that is a different issue. So, I took all the parts off. I think I might try to sell online or something like that. We'll see. I'm looking through. I believe that a couple of the, like the self-propel linkages, may actually be worth some money. So just as far as I've seen stuff listed online and generally things that people want are listed online. Uh, but let's get to talking about what you need to do the swap. So the first thing you need to do to do the swap is to make sure that your mower mounts, you know, the three bolts that hold the engine on to the uh, mower deck are correct. And in this case, it lines up perfectly. Let's see what else. Hey Team YouTube, we're gonna add some science into this. Uh, get yourself something to measure, you know, the crank uh, diameter width, and then also the crank length, and those have to be close or identical if you want to try and reuse your existing blade system or whatever. In my case, for the self-propel system, you have a little uh, a little ring, a little uh, bushing where the belt rides, and then uh, you have this feature here where a set screw uh, goes in. My new mower does not quite have that, but it's close enough. You also have, um, you'd have a, a keyway around here. Uh, of course, I'll have to demonstrate that here. I'm going to flip the mower here for the keyway. Ah, yes, and there is the keyway. So what I ended up doing, though, was something a little different. So let's move over to the uh, uh, mower that now has the engine swapped onto it. Hey, Team YouTube. So here we have uh, the donor mower, the overhead valve mower, and the shaft diameter is the same, I believe it's 25 millimeters, the same as the old uh, engine, the uh, uh, Briggs Quantum. 
So then I have, you can see the bolts here where everything, you know, the, the, the motor mounts on. And then of course these are guards here for the self propel. Then here's the pulley. And there was a feature on this crank that was a more of a keyway, like, like this keyway here, but I was able to put, see right there, there's a set screw right up there. I was able to just push that in. And this is one of those personal pace things. It's, it's, it's really nice. I really uh, like how it works because the faster you walk and hold the handle, the faster it goes. So it literally just kind of adjusts to how hard you're pushing, you know, how hard you're pushing on the mower handle for how fast it goes for you. Um, anyhow, I was not able to reuse the mower blade here. This is from the original uh, personal pace mower and I could not use the donor one. Now this is a Troy Bill, and as you can see it also has a different mount. It has this funny shape rather than a through hole. And one of the things also, this is the personal pace uh, mount for the blade. This is the Troy build and it features a, a thing here. Well, fortunately I had to buy a new one because the old one didn't know it when I bought it, was kind of cracked. And if that uh, kind of built-in key feature is broken, then, well, your mower blade's going to kind of maybe spin at some point, uh, you know, free of the uh, shaft. So I had to buy one of these new, and this is, what, 18 bucks online. So not a terrible setback, although it did increase the total cost of my mower. And the last thing you want to check for is how big is your deck. If you want to try and reuse the blade, this, the, the Troy built mower, that's a 21-inch uh, blade and unfortunately the personal pace here is a 20 inch deck so ended up I bought uh, one of these yard works uh, in my local Menards 20 inch blades and it has this adapter um, on it and you know fortunately on the back side of this that'll adapt right up at least that's how the theory goes and uh, whatever so I've I think I'm going to successfully repower the motor here. I'm going to go ahead and install all this stuff and we'll take a look. Hey Team YouTube, this 20 inch Yardworks blade kit gives you this nice selection of washers. I don't think we need to use any of those because of the feature on this blade adapter bracket fits right here and then you also have the two uh, pips here that line up with the blade. They're not exactly tight, but I think once I tighten the bolt, then uh, that will be uh, everything. And by the way, this also has uh, the pips here on this. So when this all goes in and it clamps up to the, sh you know, this goes up into the shank of the of the uh, the, the drive shaft, um, then you know, then you, you got that blade very secure. By the way, another thing on certain mower uh, cranks is not just diameter and the length of the shaft, but also what it's threaded with. This was on those uh, uh, quantum mowers. That's that's the size of bolt. And this is on the overhead valve motors. I think this is closer to a 7 16 This is absolutely a 3 8 bolt. So something else you might want to check. Again, it, I think it was easiest to adapt the old uh, mower uh, blade bracket and all that sort of stuff rather than trying to uh, use the existing uh, personal pace stuff. So anyhow, uh, moving on, let's get this assembled. Hey team, got the blade mounted and everything. It just pretty much looks like the uh, how the old one went in. And uh, as you can see here, I spun it around. But after taking off the spark plug wire, uh, and there's clearance on the ends of the blade all the way around under the mower deck. So we know we're not going to have a problem <laughs> with the blade hitting the deck. We shouldn't have anyhow. Uh, so, uh, moving up top, let's talk about the other things that need to happen to get the job done. The mower brake cable on this particular overhead valve engine, instead of being over on the side, it's in the back. So all we have to do is reuse the cable, and I'm going to take and put a cable tie here, cable tie there, just to make it run a little nicer. Um, also, we need to put on uh, the, the pull start. So that's just, uh, these standoffs here have uh, three nuts that go on it. And of course you want to run the starter, the rope pull through the, uh, you know, your, uh, 
thing there and a thing. Alrighty, I'm going to see if we can combine, you know, two pieces of junk into one good piece of junk. Alright. Alright, Team YouTube. So, now we have an overhead valve engine. You know, that's going to be like more power. And, and there's, a, there's a Tim the Toolman Taylor moment here. Got the pole rope hooked back up and uh, my daughter wants to paint the, this red cover that clashes with that darker red Toro, Toro deck. She wants to paint it to match the, the, uh, the oil, oil dipstick. I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll buy a can of paint. We'll go for it. So anyhow, I have temporarily have a thing rigged up here, clamp rigged up here so we can try and start this. This is a no prime motor. And when I bought it, it started first try. So let's find out here, Team YouTube. <laughs> Promise, this is not dangerous. Let's see here. Yeah, baby! Take off the clamp. Well, time to go and mow. And that was easy start too. I uh, I can't believe it. Anyway, have a great YouTube day, YouTube, and enjoy your lawn care uh, endeavors.